Hey guys, how are you going? In today's video, I wanted to address a few commonly believed ADHD myths. Before we should get into this, I should say that I've spouted a few of these myself in the past. Uh, I've even said them on national TV, uh, but now I know that they are not entirely true. The first ADHD myth that I wanted to address is that people with ADHD are more creative than people who do not have it. Now I've done a lot of digging around on this subject area and it turns out that it's mostly bollocks. There's been very limited actual study into this uh, and the few studies that have done it have shown that there is piss all difference between people with ADHD and people who don't in terms of thinking outside of the box and all that kind of stuff. Now believe me when I tell you guys I wanted this one to be true. I'd love there to be some upside uh, to having ADHD uh, and being more creative and being able to think outside the box uh, as it's often phrased uh, would be incredibly useful thing to have. But unfortunately there doesn't seem to be much in it. So one of the other things I heard was that people with ADHD are more drawn to jobs in the creative arts and I've had a little look online and I can't find any great amount of evidence to support this there doesn't seem to have been any proper studies into it and the only information that I could find of any merit that talked about this held up what I've just said in that there's no concrete link between creativity and ADHD. So my theory is that people with ADHD are not any more creative than people who do not have ADHD. We just do it more because it's more enjoyable and we are able to do it. Uh, and our brain says, yeah, this is fun. Have some dopamine, do the creative thing. Don't do the hard thing. I think that's all there is to it. All right, second myth, hyperfocus. It's not actually a huge benefit because it is an unguided missile. There's this perception that people with ADHD can just flick a switch and uh, in the style of some science fiction hero, suddenly become this driven, focused, you know, person that applies themselves to a task. And that is absolute bollocks. By and large, we don't get to decide where that hyper-focus lands. Uh, we might be doing something very interesting, might be doing something relatively boring, but generally speaking, we don't get to say, hey brain, engage hyper-focus mode. Let's do this. It just doesn't happen. The next myth about ADHD that I think needs addressing is that it magically disappears as you get older. This is, of course, absolute bollocks. For the most part, ADHD is a physical difference in the brains of people, so how the fuck would it disappear? Now, what actually happens is that kids grow up, become adults, and go out and get jobs. And the ADHD just becomes some kind of background noise in their usually chaotic lives. Lots of studies have also shown that if you're identified with ADHD at a younger age, you are highly likely to stop taking your medication uh, as you move into adulthood. And this could explain why people think it disappears, but it most certainly does not disappear. And I am a testament to that because I didn't find I had it until I was 53 fucking years old. So don't go thinking that once you've done all your exams and you move out of school and you get your own place and a job and all that kind of stuff that ADHD is suddenly miraculously going to disappear. It's not, it's with you for life, sorry. And the next myth I wanted to dispel is the idea that there is some central core reason why we all develop ADHD. There's nothing I'd like better than to tell you that there was some single gene that all us ADHDers share and what turned us into the blithering half-wits that we are, but it's just not true. People develop ADHD for a whole glut, a myriad reasons. Endless scientific studies have shown that there are a huge number of things that cause it. And whilst 
there does seem to be this kind of core set of symptoms with the hyperactivity and the inattentiveness and the poor short-term memory and all that stuff. That's it. The symptoms are what make us the same, not what caused it in us. And so unfortunately, that also means that there will probably never be a single test you won't be able to go to the doctor and do a blood test and you'll go, oh my God, fucking hell, mate. Yes, you've got ADHD. It's probably never going to happen because there are so many reasons why people get it. And the last myth that I wanted to talk about is that you can somehow fix it by talking about it. Now, as we all know, the symptoms of ADHD, the inattentiveness and the hyperactivity are caused usually by low dopamine levels in the brain. And I don't know how talking to somebody about that is going to fix a physical difference in your brain. As the eminent psychiatrist Dr. Russell Barclay once said, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, you don't expect somebody with no legs to respond to medication and suddenly gain the ability to walk. So if you're looking to treat the symptoms of your ADHD, uh, the physical symptoms of your ADHD that is, then medication is the way to go. It's been proven to be effective for many, many years. Stimulants are the way to go. I think I'm on Ritalin. Uh, Adderall is good too, and there are other ones that they're developing all the time. And they're the only concrete way of helping to remediate the symptoms of ADHD. So the psychological side of stuff, Talking to people about it can absolutely 100% help with your mental well-being and make you feel slightly better about yourself, but it isn't going to help you do that exam. All right, that's it, guys. Those are just a few things that I have learned a bit more about since I got diagnosed a couple of years ago, and I just wanted to talk about them because I hear people repeating a lot of these things, uh, and as I've just pointed out, mostly it's bollocks however we are and we will always be adhd as fuck i'll catch you on the next one guys thank you adhd oh you fucking cunt